Hey, it's uh, Mike Stevenson here. So today I'm going to take a little bit of a look at a um, pattern I've been using to help cache the responses from a Logic app. So let's um, let's have a quick look here. We've got a, um, a completely basic Logic app. It does nothing but receives a request and it just returns the response back. It does the littlest amount of work a Logic app can do. Now, if we bring Postman across here... Um, so let's drag this over and you can see this this um, postman's going to call the logic app and get a response so it's just been sat there if you see i click it a few times you're going to get response times 130 milliseconds um i've had when i've been using this i've tended to get a range between about about 130 is as quick as i've seen um going up to about 400 milliseconds and I think it depends a little bit on the um, the Logic App platform. It's a consumption Logic App so there'll be other people using the platform and also there might be spin up time and stuff but you can see here we're usually getting you know there was a 600 millisecond 200 so we're getting let, let's say 150 milliseconds is a bit of a ballpark to work with. Now that's a Logic App does that doesn't do anything so what happens if your Logic App um, maybe look some data up from back-end systems and one of the challenges is without the caching capability um, if I'm looking up the same data over and over again that can be a big um, a big bottleneck so a real-world example was I had a, an integration with um, common data service and, um, and I had to keep using the connector to look up this data and, and it was basically for a like a um, like a reference field and, and I'm repeatedly looking up the same value over and over again so not only am I creating um, load on on common data service or dataverse but also my logic apps are going to run that bit longer so if I use that as a helper logic app for example and I'm looking up the same thing over and over again I, I can expect 150 to half second responses on just that bit so what can we do about that and that that's where we're gonna um, take a bit of a look at this so first things first I'm gonna show you what I've done with um, API management and then I'm gonna do a second video just showing how I've built that API in Terraform so the first thing we've got is um, over in my uh, my API management here so let me go to the right screen where are we I think I wanted this one here so here I've got my utility API and I've got three um, operations on it. The first one is um, quite a cunning little one. So over in um, in the BizTalk migration tool, I've mentioned this in the blog article, there's, there's quite a cool use of this, um, this ability to look up the callback URL for a Logic app. So to do that... Um, I've got my API management is set up with a, um, a system assigned managed identity and then I've given that um, identity the ability to look up the, um, so it's like a role assignment you can give it that'll allow it to look up the um, callback URL for a Logic app. So what I've got here is um, I'll call my API, I'll pass in a Logic app name and um, I can supply some caching here if I want for that, um, that callback. And um, in my policy, so there's a couple of things here. One, um, the customer I'm working with at the minute, we, we have a single resource group for all of our integration platform. So I've got my um, resource group and subscription ID I've got as um, sort of settings coming from the named values. Um, you, you might choose to do it slightly differently if, you've, if you're going to have those being um, variable based on the Logic app, but it's easy enough to change that. I'm going to read my um, my settings from the call and that the Logic App name may need to be um, URL decoded depending on what format to use and stuff. <coughs> and then the, the key bit is this um, management URL here. So I'm going to create um, a URL to be able to call that Logic App. So you can see where I'm injecting the, the resource group name, the Logic App name, and then I'm, I'm calling that trigger to get the callback URL. And then what I'm going to do is, if um, if the URL's cached for that Logic app, then there's there's a property you can pass in to make it clear the cache if you want. Um, but if not, I'm basically going to do a, um, a send request down here 
to the management API and I'm going to request that URL and then there's some error handling here and and to be fair this policy is very um, I've, I've tweaked it a little bit to suit my scenario but it's very similar to the one in the um, in the BizTalk migration tool so I'd thoroughly recommend having a look at the um, some of the root and stuff that's in there there's, there's some quite cool stuff to look at um, and thanks to the guys who've done that and I can use this policy to help um, use some scenarios I need now so basically this this just gets the URL and then I've got this other logic uh, sorry other API here where I'm going to pass in this logic app name and run and, um, and you can see here I've got a similar policy so um, <coughs> one of the things I'm going to do is when you pass the API key in I'm going to grab it because I'm actually going to call the callback URL operation under the hood here in this policy. So I'm going to use the same API key that you've given me <coughs> when you call this to call the callback URL. Um, the you, you can do, I suppose you could probably do other things by hiding that if you wanted to, if you want to kind of make that internal or something. Um, the next bit I'm going to do is, as we go down, I'm getting the resource group, the um, the URL for calling that that callback URL. Um, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a send request to get that callback URL here. And then I'm going to extract it over here. And then further down, I'm now going to do another send request. So this will actually call the target logic app that I want to execute. And then that's going to basically send the method um, data over in this case I've specified um, JSON and I've sent the body that got sent into the, this API um, you may choose to do other stuff there you might want to make it so you can dynamically set that content type and stuff like that and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to return the um, the response that comes back in, and that'll basically let me um, <clears throat> call that logic app by an API operation so we're not doing any caching at this point but if we drag this over and have a quick look I've got my run logic app here I'll just have to regenerate that key because I've just accidentally shown everybody it but we'll take care of that in a minute um, so I'm going to pass in the the data here and it's just going to echo this message back and you can see the the details up here I've got where I'm just passing in the logic app name and then the run um, path at the end so I'm just going to ask it to run and you can see if I run it now because that logic app's been lying for a bit it's going to be a little bit slower and then it starts speeding up a bit and it's it's a little bit slower than the calling it directly because obviously I've got to do that, um, that URL lookup every time so um, it's not quite as quick as calling it on the logic app uh, sorry um, directly on the, the URL um, so the previous test I was calling the logic app directly via its URL this time I'm having to look up that URL under the hood in the API and then call it so it's going to be slightly slower so first step forward here is we've now got an API that we can use to call the logic apps that we want to we want to be able to call now there's a couple of different things you could do I'm dynamically looking up that URL you might choose to put them in uh, key vault or cache them somewhere or, or whatever but the bit that I really want to focus on is the next step so now that we can um, call our logic app via an API what we want to do now is we've got this this other operation where we can pass in the logic app name we can use the run path and we've told it to cache it um, and we've got a cache key so the idea is I could have different parent logic apps could call this one and they could supply a cache key or something like that that would um, let them have their own cached version of the response or you could you know you could set the key based on some parameter you're going to send in or something like that so you, you can cache it a number of different ways that cache key will be um, let's say I have Mike's cached copy and then I have somebody else's cached copy there's a couple of different ways you might use that but the key thing is if we look at the um, look under the hood here what we're going to do is we're going to grab the API key again so we can pass that on to the to the um, next API we're going to call so that what this one's going to do is um, it's really going to check to see if there's a cached response and if not it's going to call the run logic app one that I've just shown you so we're going to get a few properties out the top here 
and then here we're going to check if you've supplied the key, uh, clear cache um, query parameter so we can flush that cache before we start this if we want to force it to be flushed if not we'll look up and see if there's anything in there with that cache key and if there is we can um, we can just return a response if there's not we'd um, we'd basically go down here and we'd actually start calling that run logic apps this is the one that's going to run it um, just passing in the URL to run it so that so if you if you think this if there was no caching involved in this scenario we'd be calling the run with cache which would call the run and that would call the get URL for the logic app so you know it'd be slightly slower the very first time but then after that every time should be really quick because all the responses should be coming from our API cache so you can see here we've got um, we're going to store the cached response that comes back we'll uh, we're going to return it here from the policy and there's a little bit of stuff handling um, it, you know if, if it was a response from the cache um, I've just put a header so that we know it came from the cache for example so if we have a look at the difference for that in um, in Postman now so this one here calls the um, calls it with a cache so I'm going to execute it again and this first time we'd expect it to be slightly slower so six and a bit seconds you can see this wasn't a cached response so if we run it again suddenly it's jumped to 41 seconds and we can see here it came from the cache sorry 41 milliseconds even so you can see if we run this repeatedly we've now shaven that 150 milliseconds down to 40 to 50 milliseconds um, I think behind the scenes my APIM is using a Redis cache and it's the consumption APIM so you'd you'd have the option of having the in process cache if you're on a, um, a developer or a premium SKU or a standard one um, so you'd find this would be um, possibly even quicker again but you can see here we can you know we can cache change the timeout and cache it for a longer period of time if we want but we're going to shave off um, quite a bit of time there and also we're going to take a lot of load off the back end call so my uh, my use case where i was calling um calling that back end cds lookup every time i can now you know maybe i only call it one in every hundred times i did previously and i get rid of a hundred calls off of cds every time i'm processing some data or something like that which can be quite significant if you if you just scale that up across all of your interfaces so um I think if we if we next have a quick look at um, how that can sort of play into some other scenarios. So we've what I've got here is um, I've got a logic app that does a couple of things. So I want to illustrate that being rolled up now. So the first thing this logic app's going to do is um, it's going to use the logic app call logic app shape here, and it's going to call that child logic app I showed you before that just returns a response. And we're going to do a loop of thirty. Um, we're going to call it 30 times and then we're going to reset the counter and then we're going to call it via APIM here so you can see here I've got my call via APIM but this is just going to call the um, the logic app name and then just run it so this will be running it without the cache we'll do that 30 times then we'll reset the index again and this time we're going to call it um, and we're going to cache the response for 60 seconds and we're going to call that 30 times so what I'll be able to do now if I run this and we'll just see how the impact of running it that period that number of repeated times how that plays in so you can see here first off we're going to start calling it with a child logic app call so it took us what 10 seconds to do 30 there I think I might have my counter wrong 10 seconds to do 29 that it's taken us 10 seconds to do 30 without any cache and, and then we've shaved that down to six seconds for that loop for 30 down here so we've you know we've shaved a good four seconds off there now let's have a look um if we take the um if we take the most recent run here we can probably go and have a look at the run details and have a look at some of the differences here so So if we have a, a little look in here, um, you can see if we look at the bottom in the loop times, for example, so you can see our, 
our call with the um, the loop in the cache there was um, about half of the, the duration it was without it. And I think the, the point to note here is while we're caching on the um, on the APIM side, the, the bit that we don't cache is the way the Logic app is um, going to be doing it internally. So it's going to be making these calls out and there's going to be a little bit of overhead in the Logic app itself that it's going to call out um, and it's going to get a cached response from APIM. So we can't really do a lot about the Logic app side of it, but we can make sure that the response from APIM has been super, super quick. Um, so hopefully that shows how you can do caching. I think the um, you know the, the benefits on the performance side um, will be noticeable, but the, the biggest benefit to me is the redu reduction of load on the back-end services if you don't need to keep calling them repeatedly. So hopefully that's um, a useful video for everybody, and I'm going to now show how we um, built this API in Terraform with a different video.